this unit, you'll be learning about bivariate data, which is a fancy phrase for data that is connected from one list to another. And uh, we'll begin looking at this through scatter plots and through the notion of correlation. Now, correlation may, have been, may be something you've heard of before from another class, particularly in algebra. Uh, you spend a little unit on lines of best fit and correlation. And we'll just start off by just saying that correlation generally is the strength and direction between two data sets. The stronger the relationship, the closer the x and y variables end up creating a straight line. And we'll begin, first of all, by thinking about data itself. And in reality, we often find situations that are not linear. So here are five examples on the slide of situations that involve nonlinear data. And uh, you'll start off with just a very simple example of a food server who's working at a restaurant, the amount of hours that they're working, and the pay that they receive. So because they're getting tips, and sometimes they get good tips and sometimes they get bad tips, uh, the amount of money that they make is not at a set uh, pay scale. So that's an example of a positive relationship, I'd say a positive correlation. As the number of hours increase, the amount of pay generally will increase as well for a food server. Um, in a negative fashion, uh, here's another example, the number of miles hiked by a, hike, by a hiker and uh, the amount of water that they have remaining in their pack. Unless they're constantly sipping their water or taking water breaks exactly every half hour or something very regimented like that, in general, um, that is not a situation that will be perfectly linear. Uh, here are some other examples too. Um, let's see. The amount of rainfall and the amount of tomatoes um, that come out of a garden. Uh, that would be a situation that probably is not in a straight line whatsoever. Uh, if there was no rainfall at all, or very little rainfall, probably the crop would be pretty small. If the amount of rainfall is just right, the number of tomatoes will, in the harvest will probably be very good. But of course, if there's too much rainfall, if there's monsoon after monsoon, you're going to get probably also a very, um, very small crop. So in a situation like that, the data is probably curved um, somehow. Uh, and then last example is something that is probably as well nonlinear the age of a person and what their score in a memory test is. So if you're looking at people from adults from the age of 20 to 100, the older that person gets, probably the score on a memory test will generally go down. But there's no hard and fast rules about how much it goes down per, per uh, year that you age. So these are all situations that are nonlinear. And what statisticians and people like to do when they're examining data is to try to make sense of it all and try to put it into um, a situation that becomes very easy to study. And when we're talking about lines of best fit with a slope and a y-intercept, it's very basic high school math. And if we could somehow take a nonlinear situation and transform it into something that's linear, or at least can be modeled with a linear function, we can actually um, study it and make some predictions off of it, and we won't even need to use anything more complicated than ninth grade math to handle it. How do we express how close these nonlinear situations come to being linear? And, and then because of that, they're easier to examine. So um, we're, we're going to do this through the use of correlation. Correlation will be a number that represents how close these actually come to being perfectly straight lines. Well, let's take a look. Speaking of straight lines, let's take a look at a few straight lines. Sometimes life is linear. So, for example, a ticket sales um, for a concert where maybe the tickets cost two bucks a piece. Um, as the number of tickets sold increases, the amount of revenue will also increase, and it will be in a perfectly straight line. At two dollars a pop, uh, ten tickets turns into twenty, 
50 turns into $100, 100 turns into $200. Uh, since we've got two lists of data, uh, these lists actually have names. This would be the X value, and this would be the Y value. Uh, sometimes this is also called the explanatory variable, which is handy because it starts with the sound of X. Explanatory variable is your X variable. And we're trying to use the explanatory variable to help us see what the response variable will do. How will the Y values respond to the change in the explanatory variable? Taking a look at the graph, as I mentioned, comes perfectly linear with a slope of 2. And here the correlation is said to be positive 1. We'll use the lowercase r to represent correlation. And we'll also uh, take correlation as a write, out, write out correlation as a story, too. So as ticket sales increase, the revenue increases as well. Of course, negative data can, negatively related data can occur. And here's an example of the same ticket sales, um, but looking at a different y va va uh, value right there. The explanatory variable is the tickets sold, and the response variable is the number of tickets remaining. So if there's 100 tickets in the auditorium, as the number of tickets increase that are sold, the number left will, will end up decreasing. Now. Um, there's some other uh, phrases that get used to, to talk about the X and Y. Um, this is, the X value is also called the independent variable, and the Y val values are called the dependent value, value or the dependent variable. So um, the reason why those names are chosen is because uh, the Y values depend on what's happening with the X values. So that's another um, you know, interchangeable phrase that you can use for the X and Y. And here's the graph for it. Here the correlation is said to be negative 1. So R equals negative 1. And the story on this one is as the tickets sales increase, the, oops, should say the, oh yeah, it says the tickets remaining decrease. So that's correct. I thought there was a misprint. All right, uh, so what's the worst possible R you can get? Well, negative, going back, a negative one is actually a very strong correlation. So the sign of a correlation doesn't tell you how, how strong it is. Negatives can actually be very good. When a positive one and negative one are the best correlations possible, what's the worst possible uh, correlation? Um, and this would be a situation that has zero correlation. So um, the amount of friends that you have and the grade that you receive on a quiz. Uh, those are probably very, two very um, non-related um, variables. Um, you know, the amount of friends you have should not influence your grade necessarily. Um, well, for these students that are listed here, it certainly isn't true. And if we actually graph these out, where the amount of friends you have is the explanatory variable and the response variable is the grades, you can see that these have no sort of flow or pattern to them. And in fact, the best line that can kind of capture this would be just a horizontal line with no slope. So for this particular situation, for these five students, the correlation is zero. Uh, underneath, I wrote down, but what does this really mean? Um, because these five uh, students are listed here and this situation has a correlation of zero, it's not saying that the number of friends you have does not influence your grade. It just says that there are, that for this particular situation, there is no association connecting the two together. It's important to keep in mind, and I'll go back through this later in the video, that despite our correlation being strong or very weak, as it is in this example, that number does not represent the causation or does not reflect how the Y variable is, cause, is, is being caused a, a change from the X variable. So we want to stay away from thinking about 
correlation as causation. Correlation is just showing possible associations between the association between the two variables, which could lead to a situation where one may cause the other to change as well. Oh, which is exactly what I'm showing here too in this uh, this little slide, at least the, the title here. So the strength of R tells us how strong the data is associated. Here's another example. Um, so let's go back to the example with the waiter or waitress. Here's an example of hours that they worked and also the pay that they received. And you can see right off the bat that as the, as the amount of hours increase, their pay is increasing as well, but then decreases, then increases, then increases, then decreases. So it's not a pure, uh, purely a straight line. And if you graph it, you get a peek at the idea that the correlation is not exactly positive one. So how do you actually calculate that value of the correlation? There's two ways. One is by using a series of formulas to um, figure out the correlation. And depending on the course, uh, you, may, you may be asked to um, calculate the correlation by hand. Um, in, in past years, I have. In some years, I haven't. Um, if this is the COVID year or if this is a brief version of the course, we're not going to get into solving these by hand. But this is an example of sort of work you can do, and it just takes a little patience uh, to crank out the correlation coming out to be positive 0.938, which is considered to be a strong correlation. And along with that number and the sign of that number, we're going to actually tell a story that as the hours increase, pay generally increases as well. As well, And that's important to point out that I've used this word generally. Since it's not a perfect straight line, we can't say that it's a hard and fast rule where as one goes up, the other one goes up always. So usually we sneak that word generally in there to express the idea that it's not a correlation that's perfectly one or negative one. All right, so another way to actually solve it or to figure out the correlation, the way that we'll most often, often do uh, because of headaches that formulas can create and mistakes that can be made with using a, using a pen and paper to figure these things out. We could use the graphing calculator or graphing calculator app to do this. Um, here are the directions on how to use the graphing calculator app. Uh, the first thing you want to do is press second and zero on your calculator app to bring up the catalog. This is one way to access the catalog. So second and then the number zero. And you want to scroll down to you see the list it's in alphabetical order to where you get to the D's and you're going to select diagnostics on. So once you select it, it brings, brings you back to the home screen. Hit enter and you'll see the word done. You'll have to turn your diagnostics on so that the correlation will be calculated by the calculator app. For some reason, um, once the calculator is reset or the app is reset, the diagnostics get turned off. I believe once you turn them on once, you'll never have to turn them on again. And then the next step is to type in the data. So you're going to press the stat button on your calculator and select edit. You're not going to select calculate just yet. You're going to select edit. You're going to type in the data into list one and list two. And then you're going to go to the stat button again and instead of selecting edit you're going to select calculate and that'll bring up the menu of different calculations that the calculator can do for us so the app can do for us one of our stats we've already used in the course and we'll continue to use that um, you could use two of our stats if you wanted to get the um, information like the five number summary for both the X and the Y act, um, lists or both standard deviations. Um, but we're going to end up using for this purpose right here the menu uh, stat calculate. And we're going to go to linear regression, creating a slope and a Y intercept and an equation for it. 
So once you select that, you're going to type in after the parentheses list one comma list two. Uh, to type in list one, you're going to be pressing second and then the number one. The comma is, I believe, above the number seven in the calculator, and then press second and then the number two to tell the calculator that you want to use or the app that you want to use list one for your X and list two for your Y. Uh, once that's done, it'll churn out the equation for the line of best fit, which we'll talk more about um, in an upcoming lesson. It gives you something called the, co the, the um, coefficient of determination. We'll talk about that in another lesson in the near future. Uh, but as you see, this is the correlation that we're after, positive 0.938. All right, and then um, just a few more things left of the video to cover in this opening lesson. Uh, what correlations are considered to be strong correlations? And this is just, you know, some, some textbooks um, state that this would be a strong correlation. Anything between negative 0.8 to negative 1 or positive 0.8 to positive 1. Um, when you're between, say, negative 0.8 to negative 0.5 or positive 0.5 to positive 0.8, that's considered to be a moderate or medium strength correlation. And then anything between negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 um, is considered to be weak correlation. And if you see a correlation that's weak like that, it could be an indication that uh, a line of best fit would be pretty much doomed in terms of helping you explain the data accurately. And we'll talk more about trying to generate better models when our, our correlation is nonlinear. All right, uh, two last things to cover for the lesson. Uh, one is just a warning that I mentioned earlier in the video, and I think I'll do a better job explaining it now that my tongue has been untied from talking about this for a few, a few minutes already. So, so the skull and crossbones warning here is just a reminder to stay away from believing that correlation means causation. Correlation or association does not imply causation. Even if the correlation is strong, one or negative one, it does not mean that one variable causes the other one to change. And you can see some pretty ridiculous examples of this online. Um, here's one that I came up with is um, the number of sporting, number of fans at a sporting event so um, this is by, in terms of thousands of, of people at a sporting event. And how many points, I guess this is basketball, yeah. And how many points are the home team scored? So um, is it true that the more, is it true that as fans, in, as fan, number of fans increase, the number of points increase? Well, in, in this case, it generally is true. The correlation is 0.88. Um, so it, so the story behind this is as fan number of fans increase in the stadium, the number of points scored by the team also increase. But it does not mean that the fans are causing the players to score more. I mean, when you're a little kid, maybe you believe that clapping more, making more noise is actually good for your team. And maybe um, at the right time, cheering against the other team, booing them, can, can cause them to miss their opportunities. Um, but in general, it's, you know, that's, it's not true that the one is causing the other thing to happen. Um, one way to believe in that is the fact that this is only looking at a few games here. If we took a look at more games for, throughout a season, uh, you'd see that these points would probably be all over the place. And maybe there's a small correlation between them if we added more points. Um, here it's a pretty strong correlation, po positive 0.88. But the fact that the correlation is so high only indicates that the two data sets are associated with each other, but it's not that one causes the other one to occur. And this is, uh, I guess, just wrote a few more things here. So strong correlation may suggest a possible causation. So a recent example would be the fact that COVID transmission rates are higher 
in areas, states, buildings, um, towns, when the percent who wear masks are lower. So um, even though that there is a strong correlation between those two, um, we don't know that officially from just that observation and that data that one will affect the other. So, you know, of course, that was just an observation through many months, um, and that gave scientists something to concentrate on and to study. And uh, even though that there is a strong correlation, it doesn't mean that one causes the other one to be influenced, but what can happen afterwards and what, what did happen afterwards is they actually studied these situations. It's it maybe a little bit difficult to run an experiment on this COVID situation here because uh, people are out and about and it's an uncontrolled situation. But um, the fact that there is a strong correlation gave scientists an idea and doctors an idea to study and follow up on those ideas. And then they were able to determine uh, and prove a causation effect between the two, wearing masks and lowering the COVID transmission rates. Um, and then there's a few, a few other things here uh, for you to play around with. And uh, depending on the year and depending on our time, we may dive into this. So it's true that you can actually get pretty skilled at guessing correlations. And you might actually surprise yourself that with only maybe 20 minutes of practicing or even 10 minutes, you can actually look at a scatter plot and start to um, make some improvements in terms of just visually coming up with what the correlation is without even using a calculator. Um, there's two websites here. Um, this first one here, uh, I guess you can read that pretty well, has um, some training where you can actually practice putting points down and uh, I won't click on that necessarily, but the second, and then that would give you some, an opportunity to play around a little bit with, with the website that will give you an indication of how correlation is affected by points that are being added to um, a scatter plot. Uh, the second thing is a game that we'll uh, maybe we'll end up playing in class um, called Guess the Correlation. If I click it, I should be able to bring up my, let's see what happens here. So with Guess the Correlation, I'm going to select New Game. And let's see if I can make some improvements just in a short time. Uh, to show you that uh, you can actually start to guess these correlations uh, better and better as you play the game. So this looks like it has a slight upward trend. I will call it uh, negative, I'll just call it positive 0.4. On mm, second thought, maybe positive 0.5. I'll guess. And I should have stuck with my original guess, which I said was 0.4. Okay, so let me see if I can make some improvements. Um, this one also seems to be a uh, positive correlation. I think it's a little bit tighter to being in a straight line. I'll guess 0.55. Okay, so I'm off again by, uh, by a little bit. All right, now, now we're talking about something that's a much stronger correlation. I would guess uh, positive 0.82. Okay, it was at actually positive 0.94. So my first round didn't go too well of playing the game. So I can play again and see if I can make some improvements. So this data looks to be pretty strongly correlated. It looks pretty close to being in a straight line. Um, I would say maybe moderately, so 0.65 would be my guess. Oh, okay, so now, now we're talking. So I was only off by 1 100th. Uh, this one here. The, the points seem to be more scattered out. I don't see a strong trend where they're close to a possible line that would pierce through them. So I'm going to guess uh, pos positive 0.36. And again, hey, I got another one. These ones look to be, uh, this one looks to be very tight. And from my last experience with this, I think that maybe something very, very strong, like point net, 0.94 might be good. OK, 
second. So I'm actually earning more and more points as we go. And you won't have to sit here watching me play forever, but let me, let me just dial it to a few more. Okay, so that was a bad guess. I overestimated how tight those were. Um, this one looks like someone just threw up on the on the page. So I'm just going to say 0.1. And believe it or not, I got it exactly right. Um, well, you can believe it. It just happened. Um, this one here seems to be a positive trend. Maybe it's slightly strong, so 0.55. Okay, so I was right. It was moderate correlation, but only off by, um, I was a little bit undercutting it, and so on and so forth. So you can keep on, uh, if, you, if you want to keep on playing this, guessing and again and again to try to see if you can stretch your game out as, as uh, long as you can. Um, you could find out what your score is and uh, maybe take a screenshot of it. Maybe that would be a good idea to uh, play the game a while and uh, maybe don't send me your first result, but play the game five or six times or you know until you feel pretty satisfied with your score. Uh, I think the score ends up over here. So the, they give you the life total, like you get three hearts like Mario Brothers and this is how many coins you're receiving. So it even has like that ancient Nintendo kind of 64-bit sound to it. And uh, all right, now, now, now it looks like I'm showing off, but believe it or not, it's taking a little while to get into the rhythm of this. And uh, all right, so it was way off there. I'm getting a little sloppy. I can keep on going. I'll just let you uh, play around with that. And uh, all right, so hopefully this was a good a good intro to uh, correlation and scatter plots, and you continue to have a great day.